Good morning and welcome to another photograph development using GIMP 2.8. Today's photograph is actually a fairly simple one. We're going to develop the photograph and then we're going to actually uh, turn around and use a mask to finish it up. So we're going to go to File, Open. We'll navigate to where our photograph is located. and then we'll select it and we'll select open. Now I never like to work off of a original photograph so I always duplicate and the easiest way to do this is go to image duplicate. As you can see we have a new window here that's untitled and we still have the original behind it. We're gonna close the original so we're not making any mistakes or getting confused. Now we're gonna open this window a little bit up and we're gonna go view zoom fit image and window this will blow the image up to where it's using the most space available of what you have created now we're gonna go view shrink wrap and that gets rid of those uh, not so nice white borders I'm gonna minimize that to get it out of the way okay now, the first thing I want to do is I want to save this image as a GIMP file format. So we're going to go File, Save, or on Windows, Control-S. We're going to navigate where we want to save it. Type in a file name, which I just used the original file name, and .xcf. .xcf is GIMP's default file format. It allows you to save all your layers in your work. So if you want to go back and change something, it's relatively easy to do. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And if you already have a file with that name, it will warn you and ask you if you want to replace. I'm going to go ahead and say yes in this case, because I want this to be the primary uh, development for this photograph. I did play with it earlier, but uh, I didn't complete it. Now, I like leaving an original layer at the bottom, so I can always have a reference point to go back to and look at. So we're going to duplicate that original layer. And then we're going to rename this to Curves. We do that by double-clicking on the text and then just typing in Curves. Now, Curves is a very powerful tool in GIMP. You can use it to correct color mistakes. You can use it uh, to adjust your highlights and shadows. You can use it for your tonal balance. There's just a million and one features of Curves. Today's use is going to be very simple, very straightforward. We're going to go to Colors, and we'll select Curves, and it brings up a little histogram with a solid line. Now we can left-click anywhere on this line to add little dots. We can then drag those dots around to get the effect that we're looking for. Now the biggest thing is the contrast between the ground, the contrast of the ground was too plain, so we're going to make it more like it was the day I took this photo, which is right about there. Once you're satisfied with the adjustments that your curves has done, go ahead and hit OK, and that saves those changes. Now if we want to compare it to the original photo, it's very simple. Just click on the eyeball. There's the original photograph, and here's what we have now. And as you can see, the original is just a little plain and, and eh, kind of monotone in the ground and mountain regions. Now the problem with our developed photograph is the sky is too artificial. So now we have a dilemma. The original photograph has the sky we want, and the developed photograph has the ground we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the curves layer because we do like the ground there. And we're going to rename this to mask. And then we're going to copy the original layer and just name that sky because we want to use that sky. Now we're going to move the sky layer up one to get it right underneath mask. Now we're going to left click on mask 
and then right click on it and choose add layer mask. We're going to leave the default of white full opacity and hit add. We want to make certain the mask section of that layer is selected when we actually start working on it. To do that we just left click on it one time. Now in order to select the sky we're going to use one of GIMP's numerous selection tools and it's going to be the color select tool. So let's left click on that and we want to select the sky so let's left click on the sky layer and you see the white outline that tells you what you're working on. So we're going to be selecting from the sky layer. We left click and it selects everything in that color range. It did not select the entire sky and the reason is is because the sky itself is a gradient from light to dark uh, and therefore it's the range did not pick up on all of that. Now to add to this selection we hold down the shift key and you can see the uh, little plus above the hand next to your arrow and we can click on another section of sky and we're going to keep clicking until we get the entire sky selected. All I'm doing is holding down shift and left clicking wherever I see spots where there shouldn't be. And that gives us our full sky selection. Now we actually want to fill this in black and to do that we're going to go ahead and left click on the mask and we're going to go to the bucket fill tool select fill whole selection and make certain we have black on the foreground color right here. Then we're going to left click anywhere in our selected area and you can see over here on the mask it filled it in black which is exactly what we wanted. Now let's remove our selection so we can see what it looks like. Go to select, none, and that is what we have. Now if we go to 100%, there's no discernible difference between the mountain and the sky, which sometimes there can be. It'll look like a, a distinct cutout, but in this case, you can't tell, which is what I was aiming for. Now I'm going to zoom this back out to uh, zoom fit image and window and this is what our final photograph should look like now if you want to do some comparisons here let's compare to the original the original of course the ground and the uh, grasses and, and shrub um, just brush was plain and, and kind of dull and our developed final one brings that to life without overdoing the sky which is what happened initially after our curves now we're going to save this by going to file save and now we're going to export it as a jpeg so we'll go file export and we'll navigate to where we want to save it and I put a .jpg here and the reason why is the file size is considerably smaller than that of a PNG and therefore it's easier to transfer to the internet for printing prints and so forth now we're gonna hit export we'll select replace because I already had a file of that name and that brings up our little export window the quality if it's something I'm going to print or think I may print, I'm going to go with 100% quality. Subsampling, again, if you're printing, you want to go with best quality. Now, if you're doing something just for the web, you can leave the quality at 80 and change the subsampling to uh, horizontal chroma haft or um, remove some of the progressive or XI, EXIF data. By removing those, it'll give you a smaller file size. Uh, additionally, you can scale the image down to a more comfortable size for 
a monitor or the internet. Now we're going to go ahead and hit export. And when it finishes, we are done. Now I will be developing photographs for people here in the near future. If you have photographs that you need help developing or if you're stumped on a particular photograph and would like me to develop it, please send me an email. Uh, in the comments of this video is the email address. As always, I do accept and welcome any and all comments. And uh, if I if you do want me to develop a photograph or restore a photograph that's been damaged, there will be a fee involved. And all those details will be discussed at v uh, in email before I begin any work on a photograph. Uh, thank you for your time, and thank you for subscribing to my channel. I hope you were able to walk away with at least a little something from this video, and I hope you found it beneficial in some way. Thank you.